The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do, so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So, summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of olive oil. And he said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it fifty. Then he asked another, And how much do you owe? He replied, A hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and make it 80. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. And whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of the Lord. Holy and gracious God, I speak in your name and in your presence, asking that my words would be pleasing to you, guided by your Spirit, and that the hearts and minds of your people would be open to you. Through Christ our Lord, I pray. Amen. Well, the... The New Testament is filled with things that are called the hard sayings of Jesus. I'm not sure that the parable of the dishonest steward, that's what our text was this morning, I'm not sure that's one of the hard sayings of Jesus. I think for many, it's one of the, what in the world are you talking about, Jesus, sayings of Jesus. So, however... I think it's not that challenging if we listen to it carefully. It, it might not say what at first we think it says, and then it might say what we're, we didn't realize it says. So in the parable, Jesus is contrasting how to live in this age versus how to live in the age of light. 
And I want you to notice that with regard to the age of light, and he, he does, he, he, he references the age of light, and he references the eternal habitations. But he doesn't suggest that the age of light doesn't occur until eternity. He suggests the opposite. The age of light is right here, right now. And what he essentially says, very simply, is that this manager acted shrewdly based upon the values of the, this age, which is exactly what his manager says. He is shrewd based upon how to live in this age. And that's the only thing he's commended for. Not, he's not, it's not ever said he's honest. It said he's smart. He's, he's shrewd in how to make a place for himself in this age. About He understands how things work in this age. He understands how to secure a place for himself in this age. And what Jesus says is that the children of light are not as shrewd in how to make a place for themselves in the age of light. Make sense? This guy's smart. The children of light are not so smart in how to make a place for themselves in the eternal habitations in the age of light right now. Good enough? Okay. <laughs> All right. So, how do, we, how do we then respond to this? First, let me say that God understands that that is a very challenging invitation for, as for a human being. Very challenging. I would actually say humanity is impaled on that invitation because we live in this age. All of us do. We're, we're immersed in this age all of its values, all of its standards, all of its customs. It is the world we live in. And we're invited, while we actually live in this age, we're invited to be children of light and begin to make the age of light our place of belonging. But it's very difficult. Now, I don't want to get distracted, but, but my understanding of this is that humanity is being invited to further evolve in our understanding of what's going on and to evolve into creatures that, that are really like Jesus, living in this age divinely, to be divine human beings. And so, all the Gospels begin and I'm going to talk about Luke specifically, but all the Gospels begin with God understanding how hard that is. And this is what we miss. We just miss it. The incarnation is God's fundamental response to how hard it is. God's saying, I'll come be with you. I will be one of you in this place. I will be in solidarity with you. I will be one with you in this place because I know how hard it is to evolve beyond your animal, instinctive, mammalian nature to be divine human beings and live as children of light. I understand. So in Luke's gospel, Jesus says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to come set the captives free. We're captive over here. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to open the eyes of the blind. We're blind over here. The Spirit is upon me to release those who are crushed and broken apart. That's what it feels like for many to be here. The Spirit is of the Lord is upon me to open the prison doors set the captives free and lead you into your divine your destiny to be divinely human children of light so luke begins there story after story after story of this welcoming god welcoming all understanding the plight of being human 
Then, little by little, it accelerates into, now come on, come on, let go of this life. Come into this one. Stop being possessed. Come this way. Live into being children of light. And especially, now forgive me, I'm going to be a little bit technical. From chapter 9 of Luke's gospel to the end of chapter 18, there are seven specific stories or, or incidents in which Jesus says, lose your life to find your life. Just in that nine chapters, or, or yeah, nine chapters, seven times, five times, Jesus says, I'm going to lose my life. You need to join me in losing this life to find this one. And so I want us to look briefly at each of those seven moments because they're very instructive on what it means to move over from children of this age to children of the age of light. So the first one is, is stark. Jesus said, if anyone would be my disciple, they must lose their life to find their life. If anyone seeks to save their life, they will lose it. If anyone seeks to preserve their life, they will lose it. By the way, it's hard. <laughs> I understand because this is where I feel safe. I've learned how to feel safe in this age. I've learned how to feel secure. I've learned how to feel esteemed. I've learned how to be successful. Anybody want to be successful? I, I, I got on Jesus, really, really, lose this life to find this one. So just a little bit later in the ninth chapter, the disciples are in an argument as to who is the greatest. Let me ask you something. Is that an argument about this age or about this one? <laughs> the disciples are in an argument, argument about which of them is the greatest. And that's all about the values of this age. Jesus said, he brings a child into the midst and says, whoever welcomes this little child welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. The greatest among you is the least. Become like this child. Lose Greatness, your whole notion of greatness in this age, to be as the children of light, the least are the greatest among the children of light. Now, I'll, I know you all wish the sermon would be over. That's enough meddling. <laughs> Jesus goes on to say, foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, the son of humanity has nowhere to lay his head. Come, follow me. Now, this is one of those moments where it's important not to take it literally. I don't think Jesus wants us not to have homes. I don't think that's the point of a, of a wisdom saying like that. I think he's saying that home that you live in is not your primary place of belonging. Follow me in living into the age of light, the eternal habitation. Live into this age by letting go of your over-attachment to life in this age. The next saying is he comes to them and he says, little flock, little flock, it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. We would translate, it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the presence of God right here, right now. Be not afraid. And of course, I'm terrified to let go of my life over here, right? I mean, Jesus, really? That's my, I mean, I'm, I'm good. I'm good at this. I got, I got it. I got it figured out. I made, a, I made a place for myself. I'm good with it. Really? Really? I'm terrified. I don't know what will happen if I actually begin to let go of this and choose to live into this age of light. Jesus, be not afraid. Let it go. Your Father's good pleasure is to give you the gift of God's presence in the age of light. Dwell there. Then, the text Erica preached a few weeks ago, our favorite text, 
We can't, she's looking, shaking her head. I don't like it. Jesus says, if you want to be my disciple, you must hate father, mother, wife, children, sisters, brothers, even your own life. Now, first of all, where in the world does Jesus get off using the word hate? Really, Jesus, right? I mean, come on. And then hate my family. Hate my wife, my husband, my children. Again, if we're, if, if we over, if we're over literal, we miss the whole point. What he's saying is understand that your orientation towards those relationships can possess you. They will hold you back. That's part of what we're captive to, is an over-identification with all that we love in this age, such that it holds us back from living into this age. And would we risk that if I actually make within myself my primary place of belonging the age of light, would I risk that I might get those relationships back in a new and more glorious way. Would that be possible? Just one second. Ah, oh, yes. Then again, he says, everyone who seeks to keep their life, I love that word, seeks to keep their life, will lose it. And everyone who loses their life for my sake and the gospel will find it. Don't you love it? And then perhaps the one you wish I would leave off, because this goes to meddling, is the story of the rich young ruler. You all know that story, right? Rich guy comes to Jesus and says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And I think in his mind, he doesn't see so clearly that the age of light is right here, right now. I think his question wants heaven. But, but Jesus answers it as though it's right here, right now in the age of light. He comes and says, what must I do? And Jesus says, you know the commandments, what do they say? And love God with all your heart, your neighbor as yourself. The guy says, I've kept all the commandments. Jesus says, one thing you lack Sell your possessions, give to the poor, and come follow me. Now, again, that's where, you know, we could all just pretend that it wasn't really, just didn't really say that, right? Here's the thing. Everything that I have, that I'm attached to, owns me. I'm a captive to it. What would it mean for me to see all that I have in my life, all my resources, all my skill, all the wealth of my life, what if I was like that shrewd manager and all of that was about how I live into being a child of the light? how I live into eternity right here, right now. What would that look like for me? And I want you to know, I started this sermon by saying it's very difficult. First of all, let me say, I don't think Jesus wants us all to become St. Francis. I don't think Jesus wants us all to walk the streets penniless, barefoot, homeless, uh, insuranceless, pensionless, it's, you know? By the way, is there any humor in the room? I mean, come on. I don't, think, I don't think that's what he's saying. But I think he wants all of us to ask, the, ask ourselves the question, what is my relationship with my wealth? However you would understand wealth. How do I use my wealth in my existence in this world? Is it just that I would have a great life in this age? Or would it be used for the purposes of God for me to live into the age of light and to join God in serving the needs of humanity that, it, we, that we could all live into the age of light? And throughout the Gospels, for Jesus, the starting place is always the poor and the sick and the infirm and the homeless and the needy. 
When you get to Jesus' mission, that's where he is always going. To what in today's world, I'm not being political, please don't do that to me, but in today's world, we would call them the left out, the left behind, the disenfranchised. Jesus would say, truly the kingdom of God starts with serving those people among us. You want to know what it means to live as children of light? Is to use our resources to serve the needs of the needy. Not just our own needs. And it's challenging. For each of us to understand how we do that is challenging, but that's the challenge we're all invited to take up as Jesus' disciples. And remember, it starts with God's understanding, God's compassion for the challenge of the human situation. And it is something I have to measure up to. Jesus meets me right where I am and welcomes me right where I am. That's the incarnation, and that's Jesus' solidarity with humanity everywhere he goes. And then right there, as he meets me and welcomes me, then he says, come follow me. Come keep, keep coming into living into this age. Be children of light. Right here, right now, be living into eternity with all of your life's energies. Follow Jesus. That's the invitation of this gospel this morning. Amen.